Greetings, Fright Nights and Monster Girls. It's your old pal, Count Dracula from the planet Dracula. And I just saw the Barons. Little backstory here, like I got this movie from a friend of mine called Anthony, who specializes in cult cinema. And he was given away a bunch of duplicates that he had. And I just grabbed a bunch of them up, and one of them was The Barons. And one of the reasons I was interested in this movie in general is because I really like the legend of the Jersey Devil. But uh, as a lot of you may know, movies about the Jersey Devil, uh, they, they, they kind of suck. But me and the Countess were going to watch it anyway because, well, we like the legend, and eh, sometimes we like movies that suck, right? But then as the title sequence is happening, we see this. Wait, wait, wait. Is, is that Darren Lynn Bowsman? Holy shit! For those of you who don't know, Darren Lynn Bowsman is the guy that did uh, Repo the Genetic Opera and Devil's Carnival and a few other movies like that. He also did Saw 3 and 4. So, all of a sudden, this movie went from being an almost guaranteed suck fest to having a shot. And I am happy to say... This is the only good Jersey Devil movie that exists. Which, uh, holy shit, I never thought that was going to happen in a million years. Uh, the movie stars uh, Stephen Moyer that most of you are probably going to remember from True Blood. Uh, he plays Bale. You know, so the main thing you're going to remember him for is just saying, Sucky. And one of the weird things about this movie is that there are periods of time where he's using his American accent, but for the most part, he's using his natural British accent. And so it gets a little bit weird, particularly in the beginning, because you're like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this guy supposed to be British or is he supposed to be an American? It turns out he's supposed to be British. And the whole idea is that his family is kind of falling apart. and He's trying to get it back together. And so they're going to take a fucking camping trip up to the New Jersey Pine Barrens where the famous Jersey Devil is supposed to live. And they're going to go camping and have a family bonding experience. Needless to say, everything goes awry. There's not really a lot I can say about this movie without going into spoiler territory immediately. So to that end, I'm just going to say, first of all, The Barons by Darren Lynn Bowsman is two thumbs up. And the other thing I'm going to say is you're probably going to wonder is there actually going to be a Jersey Devil in this movie? Because some Jersey Devil movies don't have a Jersey Devil in them. And the answer to that is... Yes, there's a Jersey Devil in this movie. But how we get there is the film. The movie hinges on you not being sure whether or not the Jersey Devil exists. Because it turns out the dad has encountered it before. And the difficulty here is that the dad is slowly going crazy because unbeknownst to him, he was bitten by the family dog which he did know about, but what he didn't realize is that the family dog was dying of rabies. So he's out in the middle of fucking nowhere, you know, going insane and dying of rabies. And one of the things that happens when you start dying of rabies is you become super paranoid and you begin hallucinating. So his family is freaking out because no one knows why he's behaving so irrationally until that's revealed. And that happens about halfway through the movie. You know, his daughter doesn't want to be there and is getting mad because, like, her dad's being crazy at her. Uh, the little son is just trying to emotionally adjust because he's, like, seven and his dad is freaking out and he doesn't know what's going on. And his second wife is just trying to figure out why he's behaving irrationally. And the reason is, is because he believes he's seen the Jersey Devil, but he's also hallucinating a bunch of shit. And so it brings that question of, is the Jersey Devil real? You're also constantly hearing about people talking about bear attacks. And so there's this big question of, is there a Jersey Devil? 
is it just a bear attack or is it both? But what you don't realize is that there's actually another option. Because people keep running into these slaughtered animals and slaughtered people. And when you look at them, you're like, they haven't been shot. They don't look like they've been mauled by a bear. But it's obvious some sort of beast attack. And what you don't realize is there's also a mountain lion on the loose. Not to mention that they make allusions to the fact that there is a crazy guy that lives out there. So you spend most of the movie trying to figure out is it a crazy guy? Is it animal tech? What's going on? But the entire time, the movie absolutely feels like it's going to answer this question. And if you're familiar with Darren Lynn Bowsman, this is not a guy who is going to shy away from the big weird ending, you know? <laughs> now, one of the things that is really, really interesting about this movie is the fact that when you get right down to it, the Jersey Devil effect kind of sucks. You know, it's a guy in a costume and puppeteering, but it's it looks bad. It looks really bad, objectively. But the thing about the way the movie is made, it doesn't matter. It's still terrifying. Because Darren Lynn Bowsman and his crew use every fucking trick in the book to fucking make you afraid of this goddamn thing. And it works. You know, it's a lot like how uh, when Steven Spielberg's Jaws animatronic was not working for the movie, he had to restructure the entire way the movie was going to be shot. And Darren Lynn Bowsman obviously had a similar situation. But luckily, he knew those tricks in and out. So when he shot this movie, despite the fact that the Jersey Devil looks kind of stupid, it's actually scary as shit when it's revealed. Probably my favorite scene in the movie is the moment the Jersey Devil is actually revealed to be real. It's a moment where there's that part of your brain going, that effect looks awful. And then there's the other part of your brain going, oh, Jesus Christ. The acting's really solid. The story's really well structured. And it's got one of those great punch out John Carpenter style endings that I fucking love. And I was really shocked that I had never heard of this movie because I was actually kind of familiar with Darren Lynn Bowsman and I had never realized he had made a Jersey Devil movie. But at the center of the whole thing really is the uh, Stephen Moyer character trying to reconnect with his whole family. So when things start to go awry for this guy, you feel kind of bad for him despite the fact that he's behaving like a psychotic asshole. Stephen Moyer is just really good at looking sympathetic while he's fucking doing awful shit, which is, of course, why they had him fucking play Bill in fucking True Blood. And he brings that performance here to this role. I'll be honest, guys, this thing was made back in 2011, and I am amazed I never heard of it. But with all that said, if you like The Legend of the Jersey Devil, you've got to see The Barons. It's really good. Two thumbs up. Check it out. Hey, we got the Patreon. So kick in our buck or two a month so that we may continue Satan's unholy work. Also, we do a semi-regular stream about once a week. Uh, and the announcement of uh, when the next one is, is announced on my Twitter. So go follow me on Twitter and you'll get the announcement on uh, when the next stream is and uh, who's going to be joining me. Although there's usually a surprise. So go do that and uh, we will see you at the next one. Hail Satan. 